I bet all of us at one time or another have sat back and wondered what life would be like if we were just three inches taller, different eye color, different hair color, if we could tan instead of like just burning to a crisp like some people. Well, I'm afraid it's too late for you. It's too late for me. It's too late for probably the next 20 to 30 years. But future generations might literally just be able to pull it up on their see-through tablet thing and go, oh, I want this eye color. Ooh, I like this skin tone. Ooh, I like the ability to tan. That's what I like. Oh, I want to be at, oh, Hemsworth, brother. This is going to be an automatic setting. It's just going to be a switch. They're going to be like, flick, I want Thor. I want a Thor. Give me a Thor. And then they're just going to order it up. Anyway, it's called designer babies from the word designer clothing. It's a weird how they came to it. It's a little creepy and it's a little cold, but it's called designer babies. And creepily enough, they already exist. There's two twins made by a Chinese biophysicist and they're technically genetically modified to be HIV resistant. Now, of course, he's in prison now, serving three years. It doesn't much matter because this is the story of why or why not we should edit humans like designer babies, you know. What could go wrong? Even though there are many questions to whether or not we should genetically modify babies, you know, for moral and ethical reasons, there are many pros to this procedure. Okay, I'm gonna rapid fire off some pros and cons of designer babies. Read with me, people, read with me. It helps to keep up with modern technologies which is a creepy thing to think that you have to like keep up with modern technologies in terms of humans. Like that's a little weird, but that's a, that's a pro. It may help prevent genetic diseases such as Alzheimer's, Huntington's disease, and Down syndrome, spinal muscular atrophy, and many others. Well, that makes sense. You just edit out those diseases, you catch them before they happen. That is a big plus, but people are like, oh, you know, it's some of the smartest people we've ever had. I've, I've had like Down syndrome, and if we get rid of Down syndrome altogether, we might take away that special spark in some people. And to that, I have no response because they're right. Maybe we should ask someone with Down syndrome who's really smart and be like, if we could get rid of Down syndrome, would you want to have no Down syndrome and see what they have to say about it? It reduces the risk of inherited medical conditions such as Alzheimer's, obesity, diabetes, cancer, and much more. I don't see a downside to this. This is an obvious upside. If one of the biggest upsides to genetically modifying, just get rid of everything. Just get rid of diabetes, just cancer, no more. It allows parents to give their child a healthy life. Well, this kind of ties into the no cancer, no diabetes, no Huntington's disease. It's more of a, you have a, as a, as a parent, you'd have the, the knowledge and the happiness of knowing that you can give your child the best experience of life. Genetically engineering babies is an option. Remember guys, this is an option, not a requirement for all parents. For those that disagree with it, they can always just choose to not engineer their children. It helps to eliminate mitochondrial disorders. Now that's a big thing because the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Parents can set their own limits for genetically engineering their baby. That's right, you don't have to go crazy. You don't need an X-Men baby. Like it's completely, you, it's up to you on how much you want to edit. It's all up to you. It allows parents to give the child genes that they do not carry. Now once again, you want your child to have the specific thing. You want them to live their best life. You don't have those genes. Your partner doesn't have those genes. Give them the genes. Just be, you know, just uh, sprinkle it on like salt. You know, you just just salting in the genes. That's a bad analogy, but it, it it works. Okay, that was quite the list. You know, let's break this down though. We're gonna break this down. Okay, ready? Okay, one. It will help increase the life expectancy. That's a big thing. If we can increase life expectancy for all humans, instead of living to what's the average life expectancy now? I don't know off topic. Um, Movie magic, it's right here. This is the average life expectancy. What a number, that's cool, that's crazy. Uh, instead of it being that, how about it be 100? How about it be 110, 120? How about 130? How about 200? If every human being was living 200 years old, do you think we'd live our lives a bit differently? Do you think civilization would be different if humans were like sea turtles and we lived up to 200 years? 
would marriages last that long? Would our social standings be different? Would we stop working? Would we live differently? Would there be, because the, that's the whole thing is like, if you live longer, you have less of that uh, feeling that you've got to get stuff done. You got to accomplish things because you only have so much time in it. Now that instead of, I'm probably going to live to probably like 85, 90. And now if I live to 200, all of a sudden I'm not feeling as much anxiety, as much drive that like, if you live to 300, 400, 500, if you live to a thousand years old, you're gonna have zero drive or you might have all the drive in the world. It depends. So that's like the weird slippery slope of if we, if we push human ex like life expectancy too far, are we going to lose that drive that drives all uh, that drives all of us to get out of bed in the morning and then do something with our lives because we only have so much time. And you know, if, if we increase life expectancy, that's going to come into question. Like what makes us get up in the morning? Is it the fact that we know we're going to die within a hundred years? Or is it the fact that we just want to get up and go? It, that's going to be another big thing. Positive influence on the baby. So the baby, if it doesn't have any diseases, any problems at all, it's going to grow up sort of perfect. And if you're a perfect child, you're going to have a very positive outlook on life because you can have nothing wrong. If you're born and you have zero diseases, you have no acne, <laughs> you have, you're the perfect height at all ages or whatever, you, you're you perfect all the way around, you're gonna have a very positive outlook on life. You might take it for granted though, and you might, but there's the problem is you're so positive, you're so happy, you're so perfect. You might not be able to connect with other regular humans though, because now you have nothing in common with them. You're perfect. You're a perfect God-like thing, I guess. I'm not sure if that's, you're just perfect in every way. And then other people are over here, they're talking about things and you can't relate because you're like, oh, you're, this? Oh, I'm sorry. I don't, I'm yeah, perfect. Genetically, it's me. And then there might be that weird tension between edited and non-edited children, and edited and non-edited people, and how p edited people might think they're sup superior because they are. And then there's going to be that whole, it'd be like a race war, but like genetic. And then are those people people? Are they human now? Because they're so perfect. Uh, slippery slope. It, uh, well, once again, it reduces what I yeah, keep coming back to is every time I try to talk myself out of genetically modifying, it keeps swiveling back to it will reduce the chances of genetic disorder. And that, for me, the, the, the opportunity to just completely wipe out genetic disorder and diseases like that, just it, it outweighs all of the consequences, in my opinion. Because, I mean, you, you could just, wouldn't that be great? You just flick a switch, I just want my baby to just be like, happy. I just want no, no disorders, none of this, none of that. Just happy. Leave her, he's going to look the way he looks, but we're going to give him a fair standing in life where there's going to be no, no diabetes, none of this nonsense. And, uh, the fifth one, I, I got this, this, uh, the last one when researching, I found it very strange how website after website, article after article kept coming back to this where the, the whole, their whole thing is the quote, you call the shots as the parent, you get to decide. Now, I'm not sure if that's the best way to look at it, where you're like, you got supreme control, because that seems a little overbearing. And then, you know, you got those parents that are like really overbearing. How are they going to take this? Are they like minutely going to just adjust every little cell in your body? Should we allow that? Should we only be able to say no more disorders, no more diabetes, no more cancer, but you can't go crazy. Should that be a rule? I think that should be a rule. That should be a great rule. That would be a great rule. But yeah, that's, those are the pros. Here's the cons for designing designer babies. Uh, there's a lot of cons, a lot of cons. But in my opinion, the pros outweigh the cons, but we're gonna see. Um, although there are many positive things which can be obtained from using genetic engineering uh, on unborn babies, it is often, often wondered if parents will have the right reasons for genetically modifying their babies. That's a great point. I love, uh, like this is a, another thing that keeps coming up in all these websites is the parents have the right thing in mind. Do they get, are they taking the right things to heart? Are they gonna, they're gonna get rid of all the diseases most likely, but are they gonna go too far? Are they gonna, are we gonna end up a civilization of Chris Hemsworth's and Beyonce's? Is it just, are we just gonna keep, are we gonna see 
what we like on TV and make our children look like that. And if we're all Chris Hemsworths and Beyonce's, is no one Chris Hemsworth and Beyonce anymore? Like, are we, we lose our uniqueness. We, we're no longer unique. We're all the same. And then that's a whole genetic disaster, really. So the biggest con, in my opinion, for genetically modifying babies is it is not error free. It's not 100% error free. It will never be 100% error free. No matter how much you try, you can never get something to work 100% of the time. There's gonna be that 99.9999999999% chance that, that your baby that you genetically modify is gonna come out perfectly fine. But there's that 0. 0.000000, who knows how many zeros, one percent chance that it's not gonna be fine. And the odds are when you're genetically modifying something and when it doesn't turn out fine, it's probably gonna turn out drastically not fine. Like it's probably gonna be like, bad, just really bad, just like X-Men bad, you know? Genetic engineers are not perfect people and cannot 100% properly evaluate every gene. There are more than likely mistakes will be made. Yeah, so we have so many genes. There are so many genes. Everyone, there's, we're just, we're full of genes. We're genes. We don't know what they do. We can guess. We don't know what every gene does. We might accidentally take out a gene. We think it's useless, garbage, throw it out, and it has a drastic def like effect on something. So we will never 100% know exactly every single gene, most likely. I mean, it prob we probably will in like a million years if humans are around in a million years. But for now, we still have no clue what most of our genes do. It's crazy. The technology used is not 100% safe yet. It is only in the experimental stages of this at this point. Like, that's right. We're, we're very, very early on in this whole genetic modifying thing. I mean, we, what have we done? We've done corn, wheat, I guess, wheat, um, maybe some beans. Uh, yeah, we've done plants, but plants and humans are very different. Uh, and so, you know, a slippery slope. And like I said, bringing it back to that um, uh, doctor in China who genetically modified those two children, the, the twins, uh, to be HIV, HIV resistant. I mean, he's in jail. I mean, that's, not, that's, not a, that's not a small feat. He's in jail. And also, those two, we're gonna genetically modify humans. We don't know in the long run what that's gonna to do to our, our species and we, what, the, what those people are gonna grow up and how they age and if they're gonna be different because they're not really, are they human anymore? If we just edit them so much to a point where there might not be recognizable humans. So in the long run, is it worth it? I think so, but for now, I would definitely not do it. Like in my lifetime, if I had the choice for some reason, somehow, you get it off the floor, you get it off the ground, it's a business or whatever. I'm probably not gonna use it at all. Give it 50 years, give it 50 years. And if in 50 years time, they've worked out all the bugs, which is impossible in my opinion, but they worked out all the bugs, go for it. But anyway, in my opinion, in the long run, designer babies is a good thing. It's gonna, we're gonna get rid of all of the diseases. We're gonna get rid of all, everything that plagues the human genome and whatever at the cost of our uniqueness, at the cost of our bi like diversity. But I think that the pros outweigh the cons there. So in my opinion, genetically modifying people, it's dangerous right now, but in the long run, it will be very, very helpful to the human race. Especially as we become interplanetary species, we have to like modify ourselves for like long space travel and all that good stuff because you know, in space, it's a big place and there's not a lot of planets around us that can, you know, harbor human life. And if we're ever going to survive the explosion of the sun, we're gonna to have to become interplanetary species. So I think gene editing is gonna be really important then when we have to genetically modify human beings ready that, that are gonna be like spending their entire life in zero Gs in space. So that's gonna be a big, big helping. But for right now, but for right now, I would stay away from gene editing yourself or your kids for at least 50 years. Give it time. We still gotta, you know, we gotta try it on the monkeys. The monkeys, they uh, they love us, you know. If monkeys could talk, you know. And the rats, ooh, the white mice, they just love us. Anyway, this has been my video assignment on whether or not editing babies, gene editing babies, designer babies, is a good idea. Pros or cons? I've given you some pros, I've given you some cons, my opinion, once again, my conclusion, gene editing is good. Just give it 50 years. 
before you do it to anyone you know or yourself. That's all. Thank you.